Father, we come before you. Standing here at the throne of grace boldly. Receiving the anointing. Praise God. To deliver your covenant words in faith. Open the eyes of our understanding. Open our hearts and minds. What a privilege and honor it is to take this place on this holy desk and deliver these words. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I want to bring your attention to something In the 23rd chapter of Genesis, Sarah was 107 and 20 years old. These were the years of the life of Sarah and she died. And we won't take time to read all of this, but he wanted a place to bury his dead. And they said, you are a prince among us. And they weren't, they, they weren't covenant people. They wanted to give him the place. We, we give it to you. He said, no. Tell me the price. Well, and so they told him, and he just simply said, give them the money. He wouldn't take it as a gift. He paid for it. And he mourned her. Well, you would think that's where the story would end. But in the 24th chapter, Abraham was old and well stricken in age and the Lord blessed Abraham in all things. And chapter 25, Then again, Abraham took a wife. Her name was Keturah, and he had six more sons. And lived to be 175 years old. You think faith doesn't work? <laughs> now, we know from the fourth chapter of Romans, so let's turn over there. Romans chapter four. What shall we say then that Abraham our father as pertaining, pertaining to the flesh hath found or the key of life? Verse four, now unto him that worketh his reward is not reckoned of grace but of debt. Look over, look at the 16th verse. Therefore, it is of faith that it might be by grace. Look at this. Now, we're, we're talking about covenant promises here. Blood, blood back covenant promises. To the end, the promise might be sure to all the seed. Not to that only which is of the law, but to that also which is of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. As it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations before him or like him whom he believed even God who quickeneth the dead and calleth those things that be not as though they were, who against hope believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations according to that which was spoken. According to that which was spoken. so shall thy seed be. be. Now, where did he do that? We read it. That was over in the 15th chapter. But the 17th chapter, he, he entered into the covenant of circumcision. But there's blood all the way through this. And that's the point. These are covenants of blood, which makes them everlasting. 
according to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. Being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body, now dead when he was about 100 years old, neither the, the deadness of Sarah's womb. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God, being fully persuaded that what he had promised he was able to perform. Therefore, it was imputed to him for righteousness. Now, it was not written for his sake alone that it was imputed to him, but for us also to whom it shall be imputed if we believe on him that raised up Jesus our Lord from the dead who was delivered for our offenses and raised again for our justification. The connection here was faith. So I'm gonna read you something that Peter wrote. Simon Peter, a servant or a slave and apostle of Jesus Christ, who then obtained like precious faith with us. You have the same faith that the apostle Peter and the apostle John. We find it in the book of Hebrews. Jesus is the author of our faith. It's all the same faith. It's all the same God. And it's all the same devil. God will never change and the devil can't. A skunk is a skunk. <laughs> a thief. He's a thief. Yes. Forgive me, Father, for saying that. I had no right to rail against him. But he is a thief. Jesus called him a thief. He comes but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But I have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Whew! According as his divine power has given unto us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and virtue. Whereby, listen now, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises that by these you might be partakers of the divine nature. All of this, all of these things are covenant promises. They belong to us. So what's the first thing that you should do? Well, glory to God, I have his divine nature. Amen. And I've had people, oh, Brother Copeland, do you believe it or do you not? Amen. Yes, he's alive in me. Amen. Now, it's vitally important what happened after Moses was gone? Joshua took over. And the Lord told him, you meditate in my word day and night and you are there, you will observe or you will see how to carry out what I've told you to do. Amen. Amen. So instead of sending out 10 spies, he only sent out two. <laughs> Amen. And that's when Rahab came in. So, and she was covenanted into the family of Jesus. So now, we're here in the ninth chapter of the book of Hebrews. People say, um, and it says the, the letter from the Apostle Paul to the Hebrews. And then others will come along and say, we really don't know who wrote that. Get over it. <laughs> he talks about Timothy. It's his style. And he's a Hebrew of Hebrews and sat at the feet of Gamaliel. Highly, highly educated man. And besides that, when Jesus appeared to Brother Hagin, he asked him, <laughs> did, did Paul write the book of Hebrews? And Jesus said, well, of course he did. <laughs> so it's wonderful. Chapter nine. Then verily the first covenant had also ordinances of divine service and a worldly sanctuary. Now remember what we're talking about. We're talking about the sin problem. And now it's no longer a problem. 
It's still there because the devil's still here. Oh, yes, sir. I'll do that. Hold your place there. Come over here to the second chapter of the book of Hebrews. And come down to verse six. But one in a certain place, talking about, it was talking about angels here. Look at the 14th verse. Are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for them that shall be heirs unto salvation? Therefore, we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we've heard. Now you come over here. There a certain place testified saying, what is man that thou art mindful of him or the son of man that you visit him? You made him a little lower than the angels. You crowned him with glory and honor. Now, in, in another place, it said you made him a little lower than God. Over the works of thy hand. Thou hast put all things in subjection under his feet, for in that he put all in subjection under him, he left nothing that is not under put under him. But now we see not yet all things put under him, but we see Jesus, who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor, that he, by the grace of God, should taste death for every man. I was meditating on that one day, and the glory of God just flooded my spirit. He tasted death for every man, or now, well, what about the women? Oh, dear Lord. <laughs> when you see words like that, he's talking about mankind, the race of mankind. He's not singling out men, women, skin color. For whom did he die? All people. So we're talking about people here. So, you can't taste it when you die. <laughs> you can't smell it. You can't see it. You can't hear it. And you can't feel it. Now, my captain, Bob DeWeese, he was captain of the, of the airplane of, of the Oral Roberts Evangelistic Association. He had a massive heart attack. <laughs> and uh, so he was, he was telling uh, Gloria and me about it. He and his wife, Charlotte, were there. And he was on the handball court, and he said, I have no remembrance of that at all. He said, suddenly, he said, I, I, was, I was in a place, he said, it was absolutely gorgeous. And uh, he said, Kenneth, I never felt such power, and, and Bob's always an athlete. In fact, he's playing handball, if I remember right, when this happened. And he said, I was on this little road, and there were there was a fence on each side and he said, I walked over and looked at it and he said, it looked like hand-carved mahogany. And he said, then I saw the lights of the city and he said, I started running and he said, Kenneth, I've never felt such power in my legs. He was not aware that he, had no, that he didn't have a physical body at all. But then he said, I began to bog down and then he said, I, I came back, and it, well, it was at the City of Faith, you know, and they, they, they hit his heart a couple of times and with the paddles, and Charlotte said, do you want to know what he said? Did he say, Charlotte, thank you for saving my life? She said, he, no, he looked up and said, Charlotte, what did you do that for? <laughs> he didn't want to come back. And it pulled on him all the ways after, all the time after. I remember one, one day we were visiting and he said, Kenneth, I'm, it's hard to stay here now. 
He said, I've been there. I want to go back. He tasted death for all, every man. Now, come on over to the next, just to finish this. For as much then, 14th verse, the children are partakers of flesh and blood. What? Partakers of flesh and blood. That's you, that's me. He also likewise took part of the same. That through death, he might destroy. Another translation says that he might paralyze him that had the power of death, that is the devil. The Amplified said he brought him to naught. He brought him to nothing. He made him a zero and put him under our feet and deliver them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. For verily he took not on him the nature of angels, but he took on him the seed of Abraham. Wherefore in all things it behooved him to be made like unto his brethren that he might be merciful and faithful high priest in the things pertaining to God. Okay, let's go back over here at this ninth chapter now. There's some other things that we want to come back and get into, but this is our assignment right now. <clears throat> the first covenant <clears throat> had also ordinances <clears throat> of divine service, worldly sanctuary, sanctuary, for there was a tabernacle or a tent made the first wherein was the candlestick, the table and show bread and all called the sanctuary of the holy. After the second veil, the tabernacle, which is called the holiest of all. Now, there in Jerusalem, in the temple, that veil was four inches thick, 40 feet wide, and 20 feet high. When Jesus said it is finished, redemption wasn't finished, but that first covenant was because his blood is being shed and ratified. That veil was split from the top all the way to the bottom. Some big angel just grabbed that thing and ripped it apart. Why was that? Because the Holy of Holies is now on the inside of us. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Oh, oh. Hallelujah. yes, amen. amen. Because that first covenant was finished. Amen. The new one in the blood of Jesus was taken care of. Now, neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood. Are you reading this now? Look at this carefully. By his own blood, he entered in once into the holy place. Now, hold your place right there. Put your marker or something there. And go back to the writings of John in the uh, 20th chapter, 11th verse, Mary stood without at the sepulcher weeping, and as she wept, she stooped down, looked into the sepulcher, and seeth two angels in white sitting, and they said to her, Woman, why weepest thou? She saith unto them, Because they've taken away my Lord, and I know not where they've laid him. And when she had said this, she turned herself back and saw Jesus standing and knew not who it was. Jesus saith unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? Whom seekest thou? She, supposing him to be the gardener, saith unto him, Sir, if you have borne him hence, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said, Mary. He said unto her, Touch me not, for I am not yet ascended to my father, but go to tell my brethren and say unto them, 
I ascend to my father, your father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene then told the disciples. Now that's what we're reading here in the book of Hebrews. Much more shall the blood of Christ through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God purge your conscience from dead works to the living God. And for this cause, he is the mediator of the New Testament or the new covenant is actually what the scripture says. That by means of death for redemption of the transgressions that were under the first testament, they which are called might receive the promise. Now see this said first covenant so forth. It's the same words. The king of James just, just mix it around. Might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. For where a testament is, now this, I'm, I'm satisfied, they were trying to get over to us testament. Will and testament. They're trying to get over to the reader that this is the will of God. But in doing so, it, it lost the, the, the uh, command power of the word covenant. For where a testament is, there must also of necessity be the death of the testator. For a testament is of force after men are dead, otherwise it's no strength at all while the testator liveth. Whereupon neither the first testament was dedicated without blood. For when Moses had spoken of the precept to the whole people according to the law, he took the blood of calves and goats with water and scarlet wool, hyssop and sprinkled both the book and the people. He sprinkled both the book and the people, saying, this is the blood of the testament which God hath enjoined unto you. Moreover, he sprinkled with blood both the tabernacle and all the vessels of the ministry and almost all things are by the law purged with blood. And without shedding of blood is no remission. Now, remission. Release from bondage, forgiveness or pardon of sins, letting them go as if they had been, never been committed. That's remitting. Atonement of the animals covered it. We went through that. So now, for Christ is not entered into the holy places made with hands, which are the figures of the true, but into heaven itself. Now to appear, appear in the presence of God for us nor yet that he should offer himself often as the high priest entered into the holy place every year with the blood of others. For then must he often have suffered since the foundation of the world, but now, but now once in the end of the world hath he appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. Take the Word of Faith wherever you go with the Believer's Voice of Victory magazine. Build your faith through powerful articles from Kenneth and Gloria Copeland and other guest authors. Read encouraging stories and testimonies of real life victory and equip your kids for spiritual growth in Commander Kelly's Corner. Download a digital copy for your tablet or mobile device. Sign up for your free monthly subscription or download your copy today at kcm.org. There's no greater force than the power of faith living on the inside of you. In the Faith in the Covenant package, learn how these fundamental messages of faith and covenant will allow you to walk in the promises God has for you. Kenneth Copeland's in-depth teaching series, The Blood Covenant, will unpack the blessing of Abraham, explore God's covenant with man, and help you learn the power of faith in the blood of Jesus. In his book, The Force of Faith, Kenneth Copeland reveals the power of the spiritual force of faith in you. Understand what faith is and the effect it has on your life. Gain tools to combat fear, the opposing force of faith, and eliminate it altogether so you can have the victory in every situation and circumstance in life. You are redeemed from the curse, and the blessing of Abraham is now yours through an everlasting covenant with God. 
Request your free Faith in the Covenant package from Kenneth Copeland Ministries at kcm.org slash TV special or when you call 800-600-7395. Gain clear understanding of your covenant with God and how the blood of Jesus and the force of faith powerfully impacts your life and future. This free offer is good for 60 days. Outside the U.S., shipping charges may apply. Contact your regional office for more information. Hello, I'm Spencer Nordyke. Living in God's goodness begins with the new birth or by being born again. When you receive Jesus into your heart, your spirit becomes alive unto Him and you have joint heir status with Jesus. That means everything Jesus has done, every victory He has won, over death and over all of the curse, He's given to you. When you are in Christ and Christ is in you, you have His position of authority seated with Him in the heavenly places. If you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life, it's as simple as believing in your heart and saying with your mouth. Just pray this prayer with me. Say, Jesus, I believe that you gave your life for me. I believe that you died on a cross, that you were buried, that you rose again from the dead, and that you're now with God in heaven. I ask you to be the Lord of my life. Take over everything that I do. I ask you to lead, guide, and direct me. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Work miracles in my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Welcome to the family of God. Today is the beginning of your journey of faith. And to learn more about your new life in Christ Jesus, Kenneth Copeland Ministries has put together a special set of resources for you. It's called the Salvation Package, and it's free. It includes a book called He Did It All For You by Kenneth and Gloria Copeland and two brochures to help you start reading and studying your Bible. Get to know your Savior Jesus. Spend time in His Word and in His presence. And begin to walk in faith to live the good life that He has for you. Request your free copy of the Salvation Package today on kcm.org. Are you receiving the Believer's Voice of Victory magazine? It's Kenneth Culpin Ministries' free monthly publication that was first printed in 1973. Now, 50 years later, it's sent each month to hundreds of thousands of partners and friends around the world. You can read the magazine online at kcm.org or request a subscription to have it sent to you. There are articles by Kenneth and Gloria Copeland and by guest ministers and also a special section of partner testimonies designed to encourage your spirit and build your faith. Thank you for joining us today. We'll see you again tomorrow. This is Spencer Nordic reminding you, God loves you, we love you, and Jesus is Lord. If you receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior, Kenneth and Gloria Copeland have a gift for you called the Salvation Package. Learn who you are in Jesus and what belongs to you as a child of God. Request your free package on kcm.org salvation.